Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Wednesday, April 10th, 2013. We begin with news from the world of neuroscience. A group from Tel Aviv University may have found a potential new drug to counteract Parkinson's disease. It's actually the common artificial sweetener mannitol, found in sugar-free gums and candies. Originally isolated from the flowering ash tree, it could be found in a variety of plants and fungi, and is mainly extracted from seaweed for commercial use. But this isn't the first time the sweet compound has found a medical function. It's actually an FDA-approved intravenous diuretic, and has been shown to temporarily open up the blood-brain barrier if injected. This latest work was done with fruit flies that were genetically engineered to produce the human protein alpha-sinucellin particularly a mutated form found in those with Parkinson's disease. In humans, the protein misfolds and forms damaging aggregates in a certain region of the brain that deals with motor control. To test this in flies, they had a locomotion climbing assay, which is just a fancy way of saying they tested how many flies would climb up a test tube in a certain time. With a normal fly population, 72% passed the test, whereas only 38% of the mutated flies did. Things turned around when the mutated flies were fed mannitol when they were larvae. This boosted the success rate of the mutant flies to 70% on the motor function assay, just a 2% difference when compared to normal flies. They think this is because mannitol can act as a chaperone molecule, assisting in protein synthesis and preventing the misfolding of alpha-sinocellin, while at the same time weakening the blood-brain barrier to allow more of itself to get through. Obviously, this news is encouraging, but it will be some time before they attempt human trials. Next is a story from the world of physics. If you're a nerd, and let's face it, if you're watching this, you probably are, then you may have seen videos of ionic wind propulsion. Usually just small triangular crafts made by hobbyists, they work by exposing air to high-voltage electric fields. A copper wire serves as one electrode and is called the emitter. The current is run through it and strips the surrounding air molecules of electrons, turning them into ions. These ions are attracted toward the second electrode, a large piece of aluminum called the acceptor. A gap in between these electrodes allows the moving ions to interact with neutral air molecules and create wind. However cool that is, it was assumed it would be a relatively inefficient form of propulsion, due to the large voltage required but some MIT scientists decided to do their own investigation. It turns out it's really efficient, but don't be expecting hovercrafts anytime soon, as ionic wind propulsion still has plenty of issues and may only work in certain situations. Since the voltage required scales with the weight of the aircraft, anything that uses ion propulsion needs to be extremely lightweight. This kind of propulsion is also most efficient when producing low amounts of thrust, so the first hurdle is getting extremely lightweight fuel cells or solar panels to provide the necessary power. Even then, they would probably be most useful for small unmanned aircrafts, especially for surveillance purposes. Still, this investigation shows that ionic propulsion is certainly more viable than previously thought, and may have non-aircraft uses such as ionic wind-powered fans for cooling computers, no moving parts necessary. Our final story comes from the world of medicine. Remember last year when there was some controversy over the publishing of research that explained how bird flu might evolve to spread between humans? Well now, some similar research from Imperial College London has produced similar results, and may point to a way of counteracting the disease. Right now, bird flu, or H5N1 influenza, is not a major issue because it cannot be easily transmitted from human to human. Both the 2012 and recent research showed a limiting factor for the bird flu virus was how well they could replicate in the nose. The mammal nasal environment is slightly more acidic than that of birds, and has different receptors. However, mutations in the hemagglutinin viral protein could make the virus more resilient and transmissible in ferret models of disease spreading. Interestingly, both groups studying this were able to achieve similar results with entirely different mutations, increasing the likelihood that such a mutation could happen naturally. Fortunately, there is actually some good news in this story. Since the recent findings provide valuable information for the future development of vaccines against bird flu, 
mainly suggesting that if bird flu became transmissible from human to human, that an attenuated viral vaccine would be superior to a dead viral vaccine normally used for seasonal influenza. That's because the ferrets used in the study were able to mount a substantial antibody response to the mutated virus. Knowing what kind of mutation the virus would need to undergo is valuable for faster and more effective vaccine development should the need arise. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. In reference to our second story, what creative uses would you find for ionic wind technology? Let us know your thoughts on that and all the stories in the comments.